Alright, here's my spoiler review for Deadpool and Wolverine. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, I suggest you click off because I'm going to be intentionally, purposely spoilery. Alright, here's your warning. For the other people that have watched the movie, grab your popcorn, grab your cereal, grab your milk, grab whatever. Because I'm going to talk spoilers. Now, the story. Alright, I think, and I'm just going to be blunt. After a second rewatch, I think this story is, is a little lackluster compared to the first one and the second one. I feel like it's not as concise and focused as the last two. Which, in contrast, we do have Hugh Jackman and the action is amazing. But when it comes to the story, I think Wade's motivation for becoming depressed and not feeling a sense of purpose because he didn't he couldn't join the Avengers is a little naive but you know we we gotta get Wade to be in this spot for the movie to happen and even Wolverine's motivation is kind of you know like he's the worst Wolverine because he got drunk in a bar and all the X-Men were killed and he started killing everyone and a lot of other humans and Wade's motivation um, we do get closure at the end of the movie with Wade finally having like a self like making a selfless decision by being the one that ultimately uh, breaks the time ripper then Wolverine joining in kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy moment and I think the story uh, I think the story could have used a lot more focus uh, we do have a lot of cameos in here and the cameos do serve a purpose but we'll get to that later now the story paradox recruits way saying hey Help me with help me with this, and I'll move you to the MCU. But in return, your universe has to die. Deadpool doesn't like that. So what happens is that he steals a temp pad, goes around looking for Wolverines, brings one back. Paradox says this one's no good. And then from there on, it kicks the movie. They they um, end up in the void, and. We move on to the characters. The characters. Let's talk about Wolverine's and Deadpool relationship. Now, I think the relationship was pr handled pretty all right. I do get the sense, and I don't know if this is just me or if other people got the same vibes, but I do get the sense that Deadpool is being a lot more purposely annoying in this movie compared to the last two movies. Because he is making, like, he is saying stuff and making decisions that seemed too out outlandish. But maybe, maybe they, maybe it is consistent, and I just have to rewatch the last two. But I just felt like Deadpool was a little was um not taking it super seriously. And I know, I okay, I know Deadpool is a character that doesn't usually take stuff seriously but I feel like in the last two movies when when stuff got serious he knew when to take it seriously and in this one he's just making jokes from beginning to end it which I love but I also would want you know a little bit a, a lo some some more serious moments I know Wolverine's got his serious story and his drama going on but I would have liked it if Wade, if Wade had recognized some more serious moments, like in the last two movies. Anyways, let's talk about the cameos. We got freaking Johnny Storm, played by Chris Evans, Blade, Wesley Snipes, Gambit, freaking Gambit, Channing Tatum. You know the fan, the he was gonna be in the movie back in 2006, 2009. Even, even he he was even gonna have a movie in 2019. All three attempts wasted, gone. 
They were never made. But in this movie, we finally have Channing Tatum as Gambit. And I, I think he did fine. A lot of people are mocking his accent. I think his accent was alright. Even Deadpool throws some shade at him saying like, Who was your dialect coach? The Minions? And that, that was funny. I, I did like I did like him though. He was alright. I I'm, I wouldn't like him for like the main MCU Gambit. But like just like a one-off was alright. Kind of like the John Krasinski, Mr. Fantastic cameo in Multiverse of Madness. And, you know what, I didn't even really talk about Wolverines and their poor relationship. They they bounce off each other well. I really like the fights between them. I like when Logan got more animalistic. That's, that's a side that we rarely ever saw in the movies. Him getting on all four legs was really cool to see. The action and the shots of him pouncing on Deadpool and other characters was really cool. And I, I do like the... The straight man to the story with the other, the more crazy character, the kooky character. A bit again back to the cameos. I really do like that they serve a purpose on here with X23 and the Jennifer Garner's Electra as well. I do think they play their role. I wish we got them. I, I wish we got to see them more by the end after the conclusion. Like how we saw an X-23 hanging out with Logan and Deadpool. But it's okay. We just leave that open, open-ended. Blade was really cool too. I really like the energy that Wesley Snipes brought to the role. He, it's been like what 20, 25, 20 years since La Blade Trinity, but damn, he still got it. Like that aura, you can still feel it's there. Now let's talk about the villains. Uh, I guess we could count Paradox as a villain because he backstabs Wade. And Cassand Cassandra, and even though Cassandra is a villain, a villain backstabbing another villain isn't anything new. And he is operating without the TVA knowing what he's doing. But let's talk about Cassandra. Cassandra was kind of weak. She didn't really have a clear motivation on why she was doing the stuff she was doing. But her mind, her. I guess her mind controlling scenes and like how she like taps into your head and like messes with you was really cool. It's kind of scary too. It was like a more scary version of Wanda to some extent. But the action was really cool. Sean Levy did a really good job with the action. The beginning intro was pretty well, pretty pretty well made. Remind gives me like the vibes of like the first movie. And. Now my questions, my questions are like where the MCU goes from here because what are we going to do with Deadpool and Wolverine? Like are they staying in the MCU or are they not? Are they just going to bounce back and forth when they're needed? Well, we don't know. I didn't want to like add to, I, I, I wanted to add it for the people that follow up on the MCU and look really closely into like the timeline and like the multiverse at the end again. How... Deadpool was casually just in 616 in 2018 without causing causing an incursion or any like any having any ma major ramifications. But I, I guess it just had to happen. I guess it just had to happen. Kind of like how Avengers went back in time in Endgame, and then in season one of Loki, they were like, "Well, the Avengers had to do that," you know. But other than that, I think. It was also weird how the TVA, I thought the TVA only looked over the sacred timeline. And not even the sacred timeline anymore, just the multiversal tree that Loki made. But like, it's not like that gives them access to go from one universe to another. Because our, cause the main MCU is labeled as 616 and the Fox universe is labeled as 10,005. So I thought that was a little weird how 
they were just bouncing back and forth like it was nothing because technically it's impossible to travel from one universe to another and only certain beings can do that like um america savage or if you have like kang tech like the conqueror from quantum mania and the bracelets from the marvels kind of like how monica rambo ended up with the beast at the end of the marvels but other than that um I don't really have anything else to say. The movie was great. Let's let, let's not undermine that. Yes, the story was a little bare bones compared to the last two. And uh, some of the scenes were all over the place. I totally forgot to mention Johnny Stone. No, I did I did mention Johnny Stone's Chris Evans. I'm just all over the place right now. But where the MCU goes on from here, I think the Fantastic Four movie is going to have a similar route. They, they're in their own universe. And they somehow end up in the MCU. But. I think with that movie. I think they're going to end up in the void or something. Because how are they going to have secret wars. Without ga- grabbing all these characters together. You know they'll probably make the void the battle world. Dude. And I subscribe to that theory. But other than that. What do you guys think of the movie. Leave your comments below, drop a like, any help is appreciated. This re- this spoiler review was all over the place, but guys, I'm doing my best. It's been a rough day. Anyways, stay tuned for more videos like this, and we'll see you mo- guys next time. Peace out.